Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 108 and the name is Nostalgia. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. All right, this looks like a bag full of small parts that go with our Hacker Box Edition Pico Micro Mat Kit. We've got a female DB15 HD VGA connector, a micro SD card module, We've got two six pin headers. One of them is the right angle style. Here we've got some 68 ohm SMD 2512 resistors. Here we've got some 100 ohm SMD 2512 resistors. This is an SMD slide switch. And here we've got some teeny tiny slow flashing RGB LEDs, surface mount 0807 size. Here we've got a US Cyber Command iron on patch. This is a four port USB hub module. This is a blue aluminum USB-C on the go cable. And here we've got our PicoBoot RP2040 development board. Here we've got an eight gig micro SD flash card. Here we've got some white tack reusable adhesive putty. This is the star of the show here. This is a custom full color PCB from PCB Way that Hacker Boxes have made up. Check it out, it's pretty cool. PCB Way's full color PCB service lets you take your designs to the next level, whether it's for prototypes or a standout project, and it's just one of the many offerings. From standard PCBs to 3D printing, CNC machining, and more, PCB Way makes it simple to bring your ideas to life. Ready to get started? Head to PCBWay.com and see what you can create. Thanks again to PCB Way for being today's sponsor. And here are the two stickers that are included in this box. And last but not least, we've got our HackerBox 108 collectible reference card. This cool image on the front, and we've got pinouts for that Pico boot board on the back. Just like they always do, the folks from HackerBoxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. Even if you don't have the HackerBox, you might find it pretty handy. Today, we're building something really fun, a Macintosh 128K emulator powered by the RP2040 chip. This project is based on the work of Matt Evans. Over the summer, Matt ported his Mac emulator to the Raspberry Pi Pico and shared a blog post showing how, with just a few extra components on a breadboard or perf board, you could create a tiny, functional Mac. The story caught some buzz, even getting picked up by Tom's Hardware. That's actually where I first heard about it, well, indirectly. Ron from Ron's Computer Videos showcased his version of the project, which he called the Pico Micro Mac. Ron took things up a notch by designing a compact PCB to make the build even easier for others. And he didn't stop there. Ron shared a pre-built firmware image for the Pico Micro Mac, meaning you could simply flash it onto a Pico and get started. No need to tinker with building your own firmware unless you wanted to. But wait, there's more. Eric from the Blue Scuzzy project made things even more accessible. First, he hosted Ron's firmware image to make it readily available. Then, he introduced a handy tool that takes Mac 128 disk images and converts them into ready-to-use firmware for the Pico Micro Mac. This tool is a game changer for anyone wanting to customize their setup while skipping some tedious steps. Big shout outs to Ron and Eric for sharing their work with the community. It's their effort that makes this project so approachable. Thanks to their work, I was able to put together one of the early versions of the Pico Micro Mac this summer, and I even made a video about it. Since then, other creators like Action Retro and SpiderMath have shared their own takes on the project, adding even more excitement to the community. Okay, the first thing the instructable tells us to do is just get a USB-C cable and plug into the 2040 dev board here, and you should see a green light, and that looks good. Next, we're gonna head over to the Pico Mac Blue SCSI site, and we're gonna download the firmware for Pico with SD hat and then it doesn't tell you to do this now but I'm gonna go ahead and, and grab the other disk image as well for the SD card now to put the firmware on this board I'm gonna hold down boot select while I reset it or you can hold down boot select as you plug it in and when you do that on your system you should see a new drive pop up all you have to do is drag and drop or copy and paste your UF2 file and that is how you get the firmware onto the 2040 board. All right, let's get this board flipped over and start soldering. All of our components will be on this side of the board. 
but we will have one bit of soldering we do on the other side. Preloading one side of all of these resistor places and a 68 goes in one and two and a 100 goes in three. And I'll come back around and tack those from the other side. The optional tiny diodes go on these corners like this. Please note the orientation. The arrow will point toward the corner, but the arrow will be face down. These will shine back towards you. They do not shine through the PCB. Next, the switch goes on. I preloaded a couple of pads there, got the corners, and then soldered the rest. Next up, we have the SD card board. And the instructable goes into two different ways to solder this on. I'm going to do what's the easier way that may seem harder, but I think it's a little easier. And I'm just going to preload these pads first. Then I'm going to go ahead and load in these holes with a little bit of solder. Then I'm going to hold it in position as I alternate heating up the pad versus the hole until I kind of see it look like the heat's making it all the way through and we have a solid connection. And you can see I'll give it a little tug after I'm done to make sure that it's fully in place. And just to verify I've got connectivity between the uh, via and the pad on the board, I go through here and use my multimeter to check connectivity. And if you notice right here, I notice that I don't have it. So I'm gonna go back and add a little heat and recheck it again and then it looks like we're good to go. Next up, we're soldering on the 2040 board and I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna use a little bit of this white tack as a sort of helping hand to hold it in place. So I'm just going to stick a little bit there to kind of hold it, keep it from going away. And I'm going to just start going to town and soldering on these connections. And if you're not familiar with soldering these castellated connections, there's a good YouTube how-to from the folks at SparkFun Electronics that's linked in the Instructable. You may want to check out. Next up, the 15-pin VGA connector goes in. Kind of push that through the board. And this is the only soldering we'll do on the front side. And we'll get all these pins and then make sure you get some solder on those lugs as well. Next up, I did a quick test with just the VGA cable and the USB-C cable to see if we got anything at all on the screen. Here we go for the first power on. Hey, hey, looky there. Looks like it's working. After that test looked good, I got a little bit of alcohol and did a bit of cleanup on the board. And I just wanted to also mention, if you get around to the front side of the board, I would be careful with alcohol and stuff because there is a chance that you could pull that printing off, I read. Next, I used the USB hub that was included to connect the keyboard and mouse up along with that on the go cable. And you'll see later on, I also have a different A to C cable I'm goofing around with. But basically, whichever way you want to, using this stuff or something else, you want to get your mouse and keyboard hooked up and also have a way to inject some power into this, since we only have the one connector on the board. Then I grabbed the SD card package, opened that up, and stuck it in the PC and formatted it. It came pre-formatted, but sometimes I've had trouble with some of these SD cards, so I went ahead and did a normal, non-quick format on it. And then I copied the previously downloaded image over to this SD card and stuck the SD card into the board and fired things up. The mouse and the keyboard seemed to work okay. So I started playing around and running various programs and games off of the disk image that's on the SD card. Several things worked okay. Some things didn't seem to start when I clicked on them. And then if you look here at Mac Paint, it popped up with this message that says out of memory. But after talking with Ron, he says that that's not actually out of memory. It's a message that indicates that the volume or disk or whatever you're running the program from is not writable. But that with the SD card, it should be writable. So I'm not quite sure why that's not working. I'm going to look into it and see if I can figure out why. And I've got an SD module for Ron's board I'm going to put on and I'm going to see if it acts the same way. And if it doesn't, I want to see if I can figure out what the difference is between how that runs and how this one runs. And maybe that can help some other folks that have this hacker box. But lots of fun. And I've enjoyed playing with this. And I'm looking forward to goofing around with it some more. And with that, we've checked out another fun hacker box. I'd like to see if I can figure out the Mac Paint error and get that working. And if I do, I'll put something in a pinned comment or I will update the description, so keep an eye out for that. Or if you have any ideas or know what the fix is, 
please throw it down in the comments below. It looks like we're going to have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a Hacker Box 108 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on December 9th, 2024. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to U.S. addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a U.S. shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck! At the time of this recording, there are still Hacker Box 108s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway and want to get one, check them out. Or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.